All right, Mopar people, welcome back to the channel. I am just Mopar Joe. Today we're putting a girdle on a 400 block that is actually turned into a 512 for a viewer of mine. We are gonna dyno this engine. There's a full playlist on this engine if you'd like to see other stuff about it. Uh, it's getting a trick flow 270 heads, uh, lots of cool stuff. I got the track heat intake ported to fit those heads. A lot of people wanna know that stuff up front. Solid roller cam, That's those specs are in a different video. Anyway, we're here to make the bottom end stronger today. I'm gonna to show you how I'd like to do it. Um, I got to put one of these on with Mr. Rick Seaman a while back, so it's not a big deal. You just kinda of gotta be careful. So let's get into it. So here's our bottom end. I got us flipped over. Uh, this is a 440 source uh, stroker kit, 512 kit. You'll notice our sweet trick flow balancer. It looks really nice, SFI approved. It doesn't have a bad cost either. So I'm glad Mr. Rick picked that one out for us. Uh, we got our studs in place already. So everything comes with a kit uh, from 440 source to strengthen your bottom end. And we're, what we're doing is tying these two, four, six, eight, those bolts together. And then they'll hook up to the pan rail with some studs. Also, this has been drilled out to a half inch. So it's gonna be fun to get past the girdle and past the windage tray. You'll see in just a second. This is the Mylodon 32,000. Uh, windage tray that's made for a 440 383 and 440 i like it on strokers this is a four and a quarter inch stroke and you see how much room it has if you put here's the stroker tray this dude is a mile away from the crankshaft look at that so what's going to happen here basically is after the girdle goes down, the girdle's gonna move. We'll space this up all the way a quarter of an inch and that'll get it off our studs. See how it's touching the studs in there? And it'll be perfect. But what I'll need to do is probably cut out a space back here for the pickup tube. And I might have to clearance here for the pickup tube where it comes out like this and screws in at the angle. Here's our 440 source girdle. It'll only go on one way you'll notice the dipstick tube sticks through it. But I think I'm gonna have to end up trimming here for my pickup tube. You'll see that in a minute. But I was just examining with the tray on itself. And there's a mile of daylight right here. See it? And because I put the timing chain cover on first, uh, the gasket hangs out. So you always need to trim that. Let me show you. Right there. Take your little razor blade. And cut that chunk off. It doesn't matter if you're doing a stock pan or a windage tray or a girdle or anything. Just be sure that's nice and flat. There we go. Set nice and flat on there now. So first step, I'm going to Grind a little bit off of our girdle so that the half inch pickup tube will clear that. And I can hear people out there saying, just put the pump on with the with a big dash 10 or 12 line and do it external. But uh, the guy's car that goes in, he doesn't have room for that. So this is what we're doing. So you gotta make it work. And it's gonna be good when we're done. Uh, I'm not cutting this stud off yet. I might have to. I'm gonna really, really, really try not to because uh, the actual pickup tube itself is probably gonna have to be heated and bent or cut and re-welded So this will be closer, excuse me, to the bottom of the pan when we're done Because this is spacing us up a quarter inch and we'll end up having an extra gasket and then the windage tray is I don't know a sixteenth or something So we want to be we want to be at the bottom of our pan the appropriate amount Here's how much it took to clearance and I know it looks a little excessive, but once this spins into place, it'll be there. The problem is, among other things, uh, we put our windage tray in place. It'll, it'll snake in. There you go. And it sets down nicely everywhere. When you twist this, it hits right there. Show you like that. 
So if we look at the other windage tray that I had from our, the other tray from our 580 stroker has this beautiful relief in it already. And it's a Milodon 32,006. So all I really need to do is lay this dude down on top of the other tray and I can mark to where I cut that out at. It'll be easy enough. I did look for other part numbers and I couldn't find one that had the cutout for a 440 in stock anywhere. So that's what we're going with. It'll just be one simple cut here to get that kind of in line. And what I might actually do before I cut that, I'm gonna move it out of the way and test fit my pan because remember we gotta get, set our depth for the pan to the pickup tube. And we hadn't even started bolting the tray down yet. Here's our Milodon oil pan. The bigger road race pan, Pro Touring, 31580. Uh, I don't remember which pickup tube we have. We got the half inch one. Uh, I'm assuming that's the 18338. And there it is. I just sat it on there to be sure it was free and clear. And they give you this strap with it. Uh, currently, the strap is going to be way off for us because I think that's made to go under a stock main bolt so we might have to drill this new hole and cut it off if we're able to use it at all let me get the pan off again and i'll show you what i mean right now that's a mile above that so we might can end up making it work uh if we heat and do our bend up i'm gonna show you how i like to check this clearance here on the oil pan itself this is a one inch thick ball of play-doh and we taped that off so it wouldn't go in there. We're just gonna have a windage tray and two gaskets under that. Straight up. Maybe our plate will stay there. Yeah, there we go. Well, I'd call that uh, three quarters of an inch. I can measure it for science. More than a half inch. A lot of people like three eighths, a little bit tighter. This has the band on it, so I would uh, add for that, but. Uh, yeah, we're gonna have to heat this dude and bend it up some. Here's what we look like. I feel pretty good about it. Um, we heated our tube. I only got just very minimal spots that kind of got scuffed up from pliers, but for the most part, I put on some heavy duty gloves. Um, I locked this other side. See, I didn't, I didn't want to heat in the bend itself and mess any of that stuff up. And the coating immediately started flying away when that all that happened. So I got a little bit more cleanup to do on it, but uh, right now we're almost perfect. You see our distance between here now? Hopefully you can kind of tell that. Like that. That looks really good. It'll clear that nut and everything. We'll be happy uh, when we start shimming the girdle up in just a minute. And I've cut down my little bracket here, so it'll be nice and secure. Drilled my hole in it. All that looks nice. Uh, so I can now get the pickup tube out of the way. And the way I have it set now is when you put the pan on, the pan is basically touching this. So we're gonna add the thickness of two gaskets and a windage tray, and that'll put our pan, I don't know, less than a quarter inch away from that, which will put this about three eighths of an inch, and we'll be there. Here is our clearanced windage tray. And we'll screw that back. I got a little bracket that drops in here. I've already shown you, shown you that. I cleaned this up some more so the little gold or iridium or whatever you call that, irritate, uh, won't flake off. And I made the perfect that there is a gasket in place. It's going to get a little smashed. But I have the perfect clearance, I think. And we kept most of the tray instead of having a giant section cut out here and only that little bit of section of a tray and all that. And we still have clearance all the way through there. So now we can actually start setting the girdle up. Step number one, we're going to put our ARP washers on top of the front four lanes because our shims will ride on top of this in just a second. They give you some other hardware store looking washers. They look like this that you can use later. 
And then you get your assorted thickness of shims. So there's 125 thousandths. Those will be the thick ones we kind of start with on all of them probably. And then it goes from there, 62, uh, 20, 15, 10, 8, 5, 2. Here's my straight edge. And I've had this verified uh, within a thousandth at least. But it is very straight. It's not a machinist straight edge. A lot of people don't own those at home. And this is how we're going to do this. So we have to find the distance between our ARP washer and our straight edge. That'll be right there with a feeler gauge. So as you go through, you record just like this. The here's 24 thousandths. It's not moving it. So we need to go a little thicker. I'll try 30. Just do a little bit more. I think my gauge set only goes up to 36. I'm just barely under that. So now we're gonna add 36 thousandths worth of shims right here, or I can just start with as close as I can get them. So if we have a 20 and a 10, there's 30. And there's an eight. So I'll add one eight, I'll add one 20 and I'll add a 10 and I'll check it with my straight edge. And once I get all those in line, basically with the bottom of my rule, then we know they're all properly shimmed and we can go on to the next step. So on that one, I put two 20s in just to see what it looked like. And right now I have that much rock. So I need to take I'm gonna to try to take 1,000th out and see what it looks like. And when our rock goes away, and there's no rock on the other side because there's a little paint lip here, so you can't rely on the paint lip, right? That could be milliliters or uh, millimeters of, of uh, inaccuracy. So I'll fix it and we'll move on. Okay, so to check, quadruple check and see if we're correct a two thousandths is the thinnest I have. You can see it flapping in the wind. I can't get the two thousandths in here and I can barely get it to there and see it stop. That means that's not two thousandths there. The thinnest shims they give you are two thousandths. So either we could add two here and that would be too much. I think right now we're perfect. It stops there. It won't go under here. So that's the way I'm checking my final check on all these it'll be under two thousandths. And that is within their tolerance. We're doing our thin layer of RTV, but I've done a couple runs and now I'm just lightly putting it down with my finger because this is the only thing that seals your girdle to the engine. And whenever we put the girdle down, I know it looks ugly right now. When you put the girdle down, it's gonna squish a lot of that out. I also filled in my little bolt holes there and there. It's gonna squish a lot of that out and since you'll have access before you put the pan down, you can wipe. If any happens to shoot to the inside, it won't fill your engine up. But if you don't put enough of it, and I feel strongly about this, you're gonna have a problem. You'll have a little tiny leak forever and ever between your girdle and block, and you'll be real frustrated because you won't be able to fix it in your car. Here we are. Before these get tightened down, you can see the girdle just has a little bit of movement. It's floating on the RTV all the way around it. So if you don't have all your studs in and make them happy, if you tighten it down a little crooked and this thing was cut at a funky angle, it's going to be impossible to put the studs in later. So we put all our studs in right now and bolts like they want. They want the four up front. That one looks a little crooked. Anyway, you get the point. It's going to go in just a second. If you don't have them in, it will hose you later. So go ahead and get those in. Tighten your eight down, 70 foot pounds. And this one I'm having hold the bracket down just right. We'll go to 70 foot pounds. I'm gonna use ARP lube. It doesn't specify in their directions, but I feel good about it. And these are supposedly ARP studs, 440 source says, and we're gonna to go to 70 foot pounds. Then we'll layer all our other stuff. I figured this was worth showing uh, in case you wanna run this same setup on something. 
the pickup tube hits on the back of that number one rod right there. And basically you've got two options. Unscrew your pickup tube, obviously before you uh, bolt everything down. Unscrew your pickup tube and clearance that just barely. You can squeeze it. You can use a little torch and heat it and squeeze it. Uh, you can grind it if you're really, really, really careful, I'm assuming. Or you can work on the back side of your rod. They do have a clearance on them from 440 source. Uh, and basically you're just adding a little more clearance to the back of the rod. But this late in the game, uh, you're probably better off doing something with the tube. And I think that's what I'm gonna do. And that way I'll have my clearance there versus grinding on the rod and getting any kind of metal flakes or anything inside of our engine. So onward and upward. Here's our final check before putting the pan on. Got our bracket in place, 70 foot pounds and all those. We got plenty of clearance all the way around that. Saved our windage tray. Road race pan's coming on. We got just under 3 eighths of an inch clearance between here and the bottom of the pan. Let's button it up. Here it is in all its glory. Road race pan's on. Windage tray's on, girdle's on, and we got RTV sticking out all the way down. And I told Mark, I really wanna jump in there and wipe it, but if you let it dry, you can come back with a razor blade tomorrow and just walk it right off. Here's an example on this water pump here. See it sticking out right there? And we did that on purpose. Just like that. Take your blade, give it a little trim. And you can pull a piece. See? That's it. If you like this kind of content, always like, share, and subscribe. And we're taking this, we're taking this to the dyno soon to make 700 horsepower. people.